Hello and welcome. I am Sachin Brahme with Avaya Serviceability Engineering. In this video, we'll talk about how to create agent screen in Avaya Proactive Contact. The agent screens can either be used for agent applications like in Avaya PC agent or in any other custom application, or it can also be used for editing records using the record edit utility. The tool we use for creating and editing agent screens is Screen Builder. It's a character interface based utility and can be accessed either through the command line or from the system supervisor menu. So on my screen, I have logged on to the system as an admin user. I can invoke the Screen Builder either using the command build underscore scrn. And I am on the Screen Builder screen now or I can go into the system supervisor menu. I choose two for calling lists and I can see the option six for the build screens. I choose six and I'm again on the same screen builder utility. So it can be accessed via two ways, either through the command line or through the system supervisor menu. So in here, you can actually create and edit or delete the screens. So right now I have a menu on my screen. I'll go to new screen first. It asks me the name of the screen. I'll give the screen name. Let me give it as screen one. And then it asks me the name of the file dictionary. That is the calling list, which I'm going to associate with this screen. So I'll choose my list that is list one. So it's actually going to go and refer the fdict file for this particular list. Now the screen layout is open. Now when I'm going to create this, it will let me provide the labels as well as the fields to be displayed on my screen. So let me show you how that is done. So I'll position my cursor where I want to, you know, put a label first. Let me put it here and I can enter a label like name of the customer and then I would like to have the actual customer's name be displayed here on the screen when the agent is viewing that record. So for that I can go back using control X, go to fields menu and press add field and you can see the shortcut there as control A. So from next time I'll use control A as a shortcut. I press that and it comes back with the list of the fields which I want to add. So I'll choose my field name one. So you can see the vertical lines being displayed on the screen that is actually occupied by the length of the field name one. So for the label name of the customer, it will be displaying the name one field data from the calling list. Similarly, let me add some other fields. Date of payment, I'll press control A and I'll choose the pay date field. I'll add another one. Home phone. I'll choose phone one for this. And maybe work phone as well. I'll choose phone two for this. And just one more field I'll add. Reason for late pay. And the field name is reason code. So these fields are not standard. You can actually choose from your calling list based on the calling list field. You can create your own screens for saving the screen. I'll again do control X, go back to the menu, click on the screen menu and click on save screen. So it will save my screen. And when it saves it, I'll go back to the command line. And when it saves it, it actually creates three files in the lists directory with the name, the name of the screen dot ACPT dot map and dot SCRN. So all these three files are actually associated with the screen that I just created. So I'll go back into the screen builder again. I'll do open screen this time. I'll choose my screen, which I just created and I'm there again. Now that we have designed the layout of our screen, let's talk about some of the attributes of the fields. This would include things like field accessibility, 
whether an agent can write into the field and save the data in the field or not, list of the acceptable values in a field, etc. So now if I take my cursor on the actual field, you can see at the bottom the attributes of the fields are displayed. So you can see the attributes have actually been identified with alphabetical letters. For example, the first one, the P2, 21 is telling the position of the field, which means second row and 21st column. So this field actually is starting on the screen from second row and column number 21. Similarly, the letter F is showing accessible, which means the field is accessible by the agent, but it is not writable. The field will not let you write and save data into it. So we'll look through some of these attributes. Let me first show you the field attribute. So for field attribute, I will press F and you can see for this particular field, the accessibility attribute is set as A, which is accessible by the cursor, but no edit. I can choose O for optional entry, which would make it optional for the agent to write into or leave it as it is. So I'll choose O for this one. So this is in case where there is a data already coming out of the calling list, but sometimes you may need the agent to actually change that data and save the correct data back into the calling list. So in those cases, you would need the option O, optional entry. Similarly, date of payment, this is something that you would need the agent to fill in. So similarly, you bring down your cursor to that field. And again, at the bottom, there are these different attributes being displayed for this field now. And you can see the position is starting from row number four and column number 21. So for this particular field, let me see what are the attributes. I'll press F again. And again, this is an accessible by cursor, but no edit field. I will make it a required entry, which means the agent will need to populate a value in this field. So I'll choose R for this. So you can see at the bottom, the F attribute has changed to required now. Let's try out some others. I'll bring my cursor to the home phone now. And at the bottom, you can see the attributes for this one. The position is row number six, column number 21. And the field attribute is required. I may want to change it to A as accessible by the agent but not required because I would not want the agent to change that field because it's a phone number. So keeping phone fields as accessible is recommended because agents may need to do field calls on those phones for which it needs to be accessible. So similarly for work phone, attribute is set as accessible. And for the last field reason code, let's look at how we can set the list of acceptable entries. This would be helpful in cases where you would want the agent to populate a field, but only from some particular set of values. So when your cursor is on the reason code field, you can see at the bottom the attributes currently. So for acceptable values, I'll press A. Right now it does not have any acceptable entry list. So my cursor is on the new entry currently. I'll click enter. So now you can see the value A has changed to one. And for this entry one, I will now provide the list of acceptable entries. So I'll press L for that. And now I'll provide the acceptable entry list here. Let's say I'll provide these values here. They are comma separated. So these will be treated as different acceptable values for this field. I'll press enter and they are saved now. Now to demonstrate the effect of these attribute settings, I have logged on an agent on a job which is using this screen now and uh, he is currently on the call. Now as you can see, the name of the customer is a whitish kind of background field as opposed to the home phone and work phone. Home phone and work phone are like grayed out fields. The reason is that the customer name field was kept as an optional field. So either the agent can choose to let the data be as it is, or he can choose and edit that here and that can get populated into the calling list. Similarly, the date of the payment was a date field. Now this particular record had already data from the calling list, so it was not empty. Had it been empty, it would have not let the agent move on to the next record without populating data into this field. The home phone and work phone, as they were accessible entries only, so you see them in grayish background, which means you can move your cursor to that field, but you cannot edit it. 
And the last one, the reason code field, we provided four entries in the acceptable list of values. So they have been actually populated in a drop down box out of which the agent can choose one and that will get saved into the calling list field. So this is how it would look for the agent. Now let's go back to the command line and let's look at these files one by one. If I do a cat on the .scrn, I see that it's just the layout of the screens. Let's cat the other file that is .map. This file stores majority of the settings. You can see the fdict name is set to list1 which means this screen is associated with list1 and so the fields mentioned in here should be list1 fields. You can see the coordinates on the screen that is the row and the column numbers where the field would appear on the screen and the other values they form combinations to show whether the fields are accessible, write protected, optional entries or required entries etc. For the reason code field, you can see the one here, which is telling you the list of the acceptable entry number. So this will be found in the .acpt file. We will cat the .acpt file now. And you can see the entry number one has the list as it appears on the screen. So you can actually change these files from the back end also to reflect the changes on the agent screen. So this is how you can create or edit agent screens. Thank you for watching this video. For any questions or feedback, you may write to us at mentor at or at Mentor on Twitter.